Some of the families of the, uh, now we know over 100 Israelis being held hostage in Gaza are holding a press conference tonight in the Kfar Maccabiah Convention Center outside Tel Aviv. Let's go to a bit of that. <laughs> ואני קורא לכם בבקשה ליצור איתי קשר ברמה האישית, אחר כך אנחנו גם נפנה את זה ליתר אנשי הצוות שאיתנו חברים בארגון, הטלפון הוא 052. אני חוזר שוב. אסף. We have here with us today representatives, parents of uh, those who are missing. We have Uri, who is the father of Odaya and Tair David, Merab Leshem Gonen, the mother of Romi Gonen, but Sheva Iluz is with us as well, the mother of Elia Iluz and Malki Shemtov and his wife Shelly, who are the parents of Omer Shemtov. With your permission, they would each like to say a few words and then we will open up the floor for discussion and a few brief questions. Thank you very much. We will begin with Uri. Good evening, everyone. First and foremost, I would like to extend my condolences to all the families who are receiving some very difficult news. It is simply inconceivable what is happening. Inconceivable. I extend my condolences, all of our condolences, and we share the sorrow of all the families. What's happening is simply inconceivable. We demand of our government. And I understand that about two, two or three hours ago, they appointed a representative by the name of Gal Hirsch to be in contact with the families. And we demand to receive answers. Perhaps not all the answers will please us or will be happy ones. It's been almost 48 hours now since the beginning of this event, and there are many families that simply know nothing. They don't know anything, absolutely nothing. My two daughters, I was in contact with them yesterday morning. The phone was open. They were lying on the floor under extreme stress and pressure, and I could hear in the background, it was like a shooting range with ducks, with sitting ducks. I heard the screams in Arabic, and they kept saying, Dad, there are Arabs around here. I keep hearing Arabic. I told them, you should lie down with your face on the floor. You should face each other, hold each other's hands, Try even not to breathe. Try to hold your breath. It wasn't easy. And it lasted for about 30 minutes that I was on the line with them. Until I heard four breaths like this. And that... And that was it. After that, she didn't answer me anymore. I am asking for the whole world to see this. I want the whole world to see what I need to go through, what I'm going through. We have to bring these kids back home, and the sooner the better. We want to meet... <laughs> with a representative tonight. Someone who will give us answers, perhaps not all the answers, but at least some of them. I haven't received 
any iota of information for 48 hours, not from the police, not from the hospital, not from anyone or anything. My two daughters are over there. I close my eyes and I simply don't know where they are. They're either being raped in Gaza. <laughs> or maybe they're thrown somewhere in a ditch and I'm only 30 minutes away from them and I cannot do anything. There's nothing I can do about it. Somebody has to stop this. I'll take a break for now. Now we will continue with Merav. Good evening. We are all in the same boat. All the people who are here are exactly in the same place I'm at or just near it. We all have children over there. My daughter is Romi. My name is Mirav. My daughter Romi, she is the middle of our house. I have five children. She's my third and she's the light in our household. We call her the most beautiful girl, the most beautiful girl in the world, the most beautiful girl in kindergarten. Wherever she goes, she has this great big smile, always positive. Wherever she goes, everyone remembers her. And just like that, as we had this very happy, joyous, and challenging life last yesterday morning, just like all of you, we started living a nightmare. It started at 6.30 a.m. and she was calling, Mom, they're uh, firing uh, Katyushas at us. We live in the north of Israel. We live at Kfar Vradim. She's already lived through a war. She knows what Katyushas are and uh, in recent years she's also experienced that she always knows where to be and the missiles are always after her but this time it was too much so we were with her on the phone since 6 30 a.m me and my oldest daughter me and my oldest daughters until at 10 a.m i was speaking with her we were on the line together they were in the car four of them drove together this amazing young man who came in there to rescue them another good friend of hers and another lovely young man at about 10 15 she called me and said mom they fired at us and the car was hit, we're all wounded, I'm bleeding, mom, I'm afraid I'm about to die. If they're going to take away the wounded, I don't know what to do. I don't know how you all feel, but this nightmare of a parent who is sitting and hearing his daughter or son on the phone saying, mom, come and help me, and we cannot do anything, nothing whatsoever, to just be with her on the line and to tell her, Romy, I love you, Romy, Romy, hide. Romy, don't breathe. Show them that you're dead. Romy, beat yourself. Maintain your good mood. You're going to live, Romy. It's going to be okay for an hour. That's how it went on. And then at about 10.50, we could hear the uh, uh, shooting very close to them. We heard people speaking Arabic. Romy was no longer speaking with me. And we heard these words. At 10.58, somebody uh, disconnected the call. And from then on, we have no idea. Where is Romy? Where is Ophir? Where is Ben? Where, are, where is Gaia? The four people in the car. We don't even know where the car is. We know where the location is, but they cannot find the car. It's an absurd situation. You know, I'm not uh, ac accusing anyone. I know there is terrible chaos here. We're all living through this chaos. The government, the military, the authorities, but we are asking for one simple thing. We need answers. It's been 36 hours that have passed. Nobody's speaking with us. There's no representative. There are all these lists in all these places, but none of them is efficient or helpful. There's so much disinformation. It's tough. It's so tough to keep reading this list and seeing that your child is not on the list. We are asking. We are expecting. We are one community. We're all on this in the same boat. We are asking the government to find a way to make contact with them. There should be a representative who will speak with us. There should be a way 
for us to get some uh, a little bit of information. We know that this government, this country can contact with the leaders of the region because ultimately it should be a dialogue between leaders. We expect our leaders to contact powerful leaders in the region in order to impact this situation and what's happening now to all of us because what's happening here is a war crime to uh, behave in such a manner within civilian population including children, teenagers, the elderly, people who didn't do anything, people who aren't wearing uniform. It's, a simple, it's simply a war crime. We expect our leaders to contact other leaders and to exert pressure on them in order to change this situation. We all want to know at least where our children are, what's happening with them, and that there's somebody who's truly taking charge here. And we expect this to happen tonight, 36 hours of such a nightmare. It's simply impossible. It's impossible. Thank you, Merav. Well, that is heartbreaking and devastating testimony from the parents of missing Israelis, uh, most of them uh, youngsters taken at that music festival. And if you want more great content like that from I-24 News, just hit the subscribe button. It's as easy as that.